Hey guys, it's Haley, and welcome to another bookish video. Today, I'm going to be getting into the most shocking thrillers I could think of to recommend you. And these are not going to be the basic shocking thrillers with a crazy twist like Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney or Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. I feel like those are classic and I've recommended them a million times before. If you've watched all of my other thriller recommendation videos, don't worry. These are going to be fresh recommendations for you guys. I'm going to tell you about a dozen thrillers that I think are super underrated and really shocking if you need something fast-paced and twisty to get you out of a slump or just keep you entertained if you've been reading some boring books because I know I have recently and I need sometimes just a little shock a little twist to get me back in a reading mood but before we get into the book recommendations I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video which is Dossier I absolutely love Dossier perfume if you haven't heard me talk about Dossier before the whole deal with dossier is that they have some of the most iconic scents that you would smell in Sephora or big name department store and the same exact quality as the scents that they sell there but for a fraction of the price and I absolutely love this one here it's floral jasmine and it smells exactly like jasmine rouge by Tom Ford which is such an expensive perfume you can get basically the same scent from dossier for only only $29. They are so, so affordable and such high quality. And Dossier actually has some of their own original scents as well, which I love. This one is their caramelized lavender and hazelnut. And oh my God, it's so good. It's like warm and inviting and such a unique scent. I've really never smelled anything like this. I feel like this is very cool girl perfume. And Dossier scents always last on me throughout the day. They never break out my sensitive skin which happens to me with some other perfumes. I get just endless compliments anytime I wear a Dossier scent. So if you want your own luxury scent for a fraction of the price, go ahead and check out Dossier down below. Thank you so, so much to Dossier for sponsoring this video. And now let's go ahead and get into the book recommendations. I wanna start out with a recent read. And because this one wasn't in a reading vlog, I feel like I haven't raved about it nearly enough. I talked about it in my wrap up, but it was one of five five star books that I read that month. So I feel like she didn't really get her moment. And that is How Can I Help You by Laura Sims. This is such a good thriller. It is so unique. If you like a good for her story with a very weird <laughs> main character, you're going to love this book. It's also very, very short and very fast paced, I believe. Yeah, it's under 250 pages. So it's a really quick read and it packs in so much in such a little book. We are following a woman who is now a librarian, but she was formerly a killer nurse. And when she thought she was going to get caught for her crimes, she ran out of there, abandoned her post, and reinvented herself as this cozy little librarian that no one would ever suspect. But homegirl has some dark thoughts and we are inside her head hearing them all and she is suspected of her past when a new girlie gets a job at the library and she's kind of like awake and aware like you and I. She was really relatable and easy to follow and she is suspecting our other main character and starting to figure out her crimes. So we're flipping back and forth following our murderous queen who is hilarious and honestly shocked me in every chapter with the way that she just was. And we're also following our relatable queen who is not going to let us down. She is going to try to expose her. This <laughs> book I'm laughing because it's so darkly funny. I honestly, it was like a train wreck that I couldn't look away from. I was reading this book so fast and at the end, I just like stared at the wall because I was so shocked. Like the way that everything played out was so crazy. I also love what this book had to say. Like there was great commentary on literature and intellectual property, funny enough, and about like 
whose story is your own? Do we have the power to change our stories? Do people have the power to change themselves? It was super, super interesting, it made me think, but it was also a wild ride that shocked me. Highly, highly recommend. I don't hear anyone talking about this one. Next up, I have one of my favorite thrillers from last year, and that is None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. Y'all know, if you've been around here for a while, that I am a Lisa Jewell stan. I absolutely love her writing style. Honestly, I've loved every single book that I've read from her, even the ones where the plot didn't necessarily click with me, I could just read her writing and the way that she develops characters all day long. But this one had a plot that really stuck with me. I absolutely loved discussing it with my book club. This was one of my favorite Patreon book club discussions that we've ever had. There were so many different opinions on how this book played out. No matter if we loved it or hated it, which I loved it, but there were some people that hated it. They were without a doubt shocked by it. We all were. So I feel like this one definitely belongs in the shocking thriller recommendation category. In this book, we are following two women who are birthday twins. They meet out at their separate birthday dinners and they're like, oh my God, it's both of our birthdays. That's so crazy. And one of the women is a podcast host and she usually has women on her podcast that are like very successful, but that kind of like motivational story is kind of getting stale. So she decides, what if I just did a new season of the podcast with my birthday twin, this weird random woman that I don't have any idea about. And this woman, <laughs> her whole past and everything she has going on is so shocking. The more and more and more that you learn about her, the creepier it is. Not necessarily because of her, because I actually think she's a super interesting, morally gray character, but just all of the circumstances that are going on around her, I don't wanna give anything away. It is so shocking, it's so interesting. The way that Lisa Jewell writes character dynamics and relationships, I mean, she deserves an award Award just for that. I think she's brilliant. And along the same lines of the last two books where there's a main character that's a little bit quirky, just a little bit different. I love, love, love following those kinds of characters. We have Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent. And I love this book so much. It's another one that I feel like not enough people are reading. We are following a woman who definitely has some undiagnosed neurodivergence. Like she is not aware of what makes her a little bit different from neurotypical people and because she doesn't really have a name for it she really struggles with it. She feels like she's shameful and wrong and she doesn't know how to get along with other people and of course typical to neurodivergence she kind of misinterprets some social cues and events. She doesn't really know how to react to some things socially. And that especially comes into play when she loses her father. He was the main person who was supporting her, taking care of her, making sure that she got what she needed when she was feeling overwhelmed with the world. And when he dies, she responds in a way I have a lot of empathy for, but I was so shocked. Like this happens on like page 12 or something. And I was, I, I, my jaw was on the floor. And because of her extreme reaction, she actually ends up in the news and then people start digging into her past and the world and Sally herself are simultaneously finding out about her past, which was completely hidden from the public and from Sally herself for so long. Again, I'm, I'm trying to be vague because I don't wanna spoil anything. This book is truly so shocking, but also so heartwarming. I absolutely fell in love with our main character. I love the way that this book talks about neurodivergence. It's never in a weird way. I feel like it's represented really well where it can be darkly comedic at times and talk about the funny moments and the miscommunications, but it's never demonized or something to be ashamed of, which I really appreciated. It's part thriller plot that is so shocking, but also part beautiful character study. I just absolutely loved every second of this book. It made me laugh, it made me cry, it ripped my heart out, it dropped my draw. Dropped my draw? Hello? <laughs> 
<laughs> it dropped my jaw. Here's another recent favorite of mine. This one came out this year, and that is Good Girls Don't Die by Christina Henry. Christina Henry, I believe she usually writes horror or her books are usually branded as horror, but I would definitely recommend this one for thriller readers as well. In this book, we're following three different storylines. The first woman we're following, she wakes up in like this Truman Show-esque town where everything is just a little too perfect and her life doesn't seem like her life. The second plot we're following is a classic slasher, like Friday the 13th, Cabin in the Woods type of vibe. And then the third plot that we're following is like a YA dystopian novel kind of vibe where all of these women are being rounded up by the corrupt government to be taught a lesson. So these three worlds are extremely, extremely different but when everything comes together in part four, I promise you, you will be shocked. I promise you. This is my guarantee. You will not see this ending coming. It is absolutely insane. I love the commentary. Again, I love the like dark comedic parts of this book. It was so fast paced and so easy to keep my attention as I was reading because the vibe switched up so drastically so often. This book got me out of a slump and I gave it five stars. Another horror kind of book that I definitely would recommend for a thriller audience is Petrified Women. I didn't absolutely over the top love this book. I definitely think it has its issues. The majority of the issues being it just tried to go in too many directions. I feel like the subplots just got a little bit muddy and it should have niched down a bit more. But other than that, all of the directions that it goes, I mean, it's absolutely wild. We are following this girl who's dating like a prankster youtuber social media guy and she decides that for his birthday she's gonna prank him and like turn the tables on him so she goes and hides in his apartment getting ready for him to get home so she can surprise him and when he comes home he is not alone he's with another girl and he is not just cheating on her he kills this girl. So we are now following his girlfriend who is like, what the fuck am I gonna do? She can't just announce herself because now he will know that she witnessed everything and he's not gonna let her get out of there alive. And she's also just become aware that the person she was going to spend the rest of her life with is a killer. I'm not gonna give away any more than that. There's so much more that happens in this book. It is so thrilling and so fast paced. I read it in just one evening during last Happy Halloween readathon in um, October, 2023. It was so great. The thrilling atmosphere was just wonderful, so perfect for a readathon. And it's really, really intense, really, really graphic, but written with a lot of intention. There are some pieces of sexual trauma talked about in this book but there's a very in-depth author's note as to why those things are included. So if you can handle those kind of trigger warnings in a thriller and horror book, I think you might really enjoy this one. Next up, I have Unmissing by Minka Kent. I've talked about this one quite a bit recently because I love getting DMs from y'all when you finish this book. I've gotten a few DMs from a few of y'all that are just like giving me your raw reactions to the end of this book, and I absolutely love it. The shock is like priceless on everyone's face and in everyone's messages when you read this book. We're following a woman who is the second wife of her husband because his first wife actually was tragically kidnapped a decade ago. But one day she opens up the door when someone knocks and it's her husband's first wife. And she's like, hey, how's it going? Like I escaped my kidnapper after 10 years. So I'm here to reclaim my husband. And our main girl is like, what? in the hell am I gonna do because I have kids with this man and this woman is not just gonna come back in here and claim him. So we are trying to figure out who gets the man but beyond that, whatever happened to this girl as she was missing for 10 years? Was she really held with a kidnapper for all of those 10 years? Because if she just escaped, why is she showing up at her ex-husband's mansion and not the police station? Is she trying to scam him? What is going on there? Nobody knows, but you're gonna find out and I guarantee you, it will shock you. Next up, we have a classic. I know some people don't like this book, but I just really love it. I feel very seen when I read this book. And that is The Last Word by Taylor Adams. 
Taylor Adams is a genius for this one. Like everything that Taylor Adams is trying to communicate in this book, I heard so loud and clear and I love him for it. The last word is following a girl who is house sitting for someone. There's like a beach town that is completely deserted during the winter time, like the off season. So she's staying alone in this beach community, just watching this house, you know, reading shitty horror books on her Kindle as you do, or at least as I do. And she reads this horrible indie published book that is clearly written by a fucking incel author. And she gives it a one star review. And it's not long after that that she starts getting creepy messages from said horror author. And she feels like because of a one star review, this man is gonna come after her. I mean, how ridiculous is that? He is totally unhinged and insane. And yeah, he does come to kill her. So it is a fight for survival. It is absolutely campy, over the top, ridiculous. But at the same time, it has some very poignant commentary. The twists at the end are ridiculous and shocking, but it's also just a really fun time. I love the combination of like saying something so real, but saying it in a way that's really fun and enjoyable. I was shocked. I had a great time. Time. I know some people just thought this was a little bit too ridiculous, but these horror incel men, like, they really are ridiculous. Can we please just, can we be allowed to make fun of them? Another one that I really enjoyed from last year, but I didn't recommend at all. I don't think I featured this in any rec videos after it came out, so it's time. That is The Only One Left by Riley Sager. I loved this one. We are following a home care nurse and she is going to take care of this patient that no one else really wants to be a nurse for, to be totally honest, because this old woman was suspected of killing her family. But our main character is really fine with that because she was suspected of killing a patient. So they're just like a duo, a match made in heaven. This has really creepy gothic horror vibes, really great atmosphere. It's so suspenseful and we are figuring out if either of these women actually committed the crimes that they're accused of and what could happen with two suspicious murderous women in the same gothic mansion. There are whiplash twists in this one. It was actually going so fast, I had to like go back and reread and make sure I actually understood the twists that were happening because they were so shocking and so fast back to back to back. Some of that was a little overwhelming for me, so I didn't give this one five stars. I just felt like the pacing was a little too fast, but if you you like fast and you like twisty, you'll like this one. Next up, we have another underrated pick and that is Lovely Girls by Margot Hunt. If you like rich people drama, you're gonna like Lovely Girls. This is about a mother and daughter duo who are new to town in this little suburban small town where everyone is pretty wealthy and everyone knows everyone else's business. The mom kind of like seamlessly makes her way into the queen bee mom friend group, but her daughter is having a little bit more trouble. She actually has an outlet which is making YouTube videos, but she ends up getting some quite scandalous material on her daily vlogs. And along the way, secrets are revealed and the dark underbelly of this seemingly idyllic town is exposed. We see the dynamics with the mom friend group as well as the daughter friend group and the generational gap and dynamics there. They're super, super interesting. The drama felt like it wasn't just like petty rich people drama, like it actually had stakes to it. And I really enjoyed the twists in this book. There was no way I could have predicted them. They were pretty shocking and told really well. It's a pretty straightforward writing style, so I got through it really fast. I read it in a day and I really, really liked it. I can't believe more people don't recommend this one. Next up, I have a duo of books that are pretty similar. They're both by the same author and that is Drowning and Fall both by TJ Newman. These are both really fast, like breakneck paced survival thrillers about plane crashes. So Falling is about a plane that is being hijacked and there's like a moral dilemma where the flight attendants have to decide if they're going to tank the plane or have the hostages that are taken outside the plane killed. 
it's a moral dilemma it's so fast-paced keeps you on the edge of your seat i felt so connected to these characters very similar drowning is about a plane that crashes into the ocean and there's a lot more going on between the people on the land who are trying to do the saving and then the people underneath the water in the plane whose oxygen is quickly quickly running out so it's a breakneck pace rescue mission and again i felt super connected to the characters even though it's very very plot driven the character dynamics definitely do not suffer and both of these shocked me so much. If you like one, you'll definitely like the other, but out of the two, I do think that I prefer Falling. Next up, we have a newer release, and that is Home is Where the Bodies Are by Geneva Rose. Geneva and I haven't gotten along the past couple releases, so I'm glad she came back into my favor with Home is Where the Bodies Are. In this book, we are following three siblings, they have a really interesting sibling dynamic. If you like like generational trauma, family trauma kind of vibes in your book, you will really like this. And these three siblings are coming together to go through their parents' house after their mother passes away. And they find this camcorder of old family videos and something completely completely shocking is on this tape which connects their family to the disappearance of a little girl that happened when they were younger. So they start to unravel their family history, the secrets and the lies that they've been told and uncover not only what happened to their mom, what happened to their dad who disappeared years and years ago and how their family is connected to the disappearance of this child. I love the way that things come together. It is pretty shocking. The twists are really great. It moves at a good pace and it has a great atmosphere of like this small town. I like the nostalgia of the flashback scenes with the camcorder being set in like the late 90s and early 2000s. The characters are really, really great. Like I can't fault it for much. It's a really great thriller. And the last book that I have to share with you in this video is Keep Your Friends Close by Lucinda Berry. But wait, this is really the last book I have to share. I actually have four more recommendations, but those will only be available on the extended cut of this video over on Patreon. So if you want four more shocking thriller recommendations, I will link my Patreon down below as it always is. That extended cut is available for all tiers of my Patreon, including my lowest tier, which is only $3.99 a month. I have these extended cut versions for every single one of my sit down videos now. And when you sign up one time, you get access to watch all of the extended cuts. So I think it's a pretty good deal if you want more recs. But back to my last recommendation for this video, that is Keep Your Friends Close by Lucinda Berry. And I think this is the most shocked that I've been by any thriller this year is when I was reading this book. I read it on reading sprints with my Patreon. And I'm pretty sure there was a solid minute when I was on camera just like, jaw dropped reading this book. We are following the like West Hollywood mommy group in this book and the scene opens on one of them dead in a swimming pool. So throughout the book we're following different women from the friend group and trying to unravel all of their drama secrets and lies to figure out how this woman ended up dead. They have all of this catty drama but then there's also some stuff that's like really not petty like it's like high stakes and actually terrifying there's also lgbt representation in here which i absolutely love and a lot of discussions around motherhood and the psychological effects of having a child or whether you're ready or not to be a mother i love the psychological lens that lucinda berry uses to make her fluffy interesting salacious rich people drama thrillers feel like they're bumped up that extra level into reality and into just like higher stakes than your average book like this. The last three chapters absolutely blew my mind. I had so much fun reading this book. It was so like summer vibe, so it's perfect for this time of year. And the twist just got me. Like, I don't know what to say. Those last few chapters were wild. So that is gonna be it for my shocking thriller recommendations today. Again, if you want those extra four recommendations, you can join my Patreon down below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. 
don't forget to check out Dossier if you want some affordable, luxury-inspired perfumes. And like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And of course, don't forget to read a book and go to therapy this week. Thank you guys so, so much again for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!